night, my home studio addicts. Joel back again here with this third video in this EQing your home recorded snare little series I'm doing. We still got Sebastian back there, just straight up passed out right now. Sandy is still chilling on my rack. So let's get working on this bottom snare mic. When we left off with the top snare, these are the moves we made, and this is what we have right now. Doesn't sound too bad, but the bottom snare mic is so important for the overall snare sound, and I'm going to show you how to process it. Okay, so this is what we started off with. Ugly, right? Ton of bleed. So we just added our gate just like we did on the top snare. And if you missed that, go back to the first video. But I will just engage this and show you what we got with the gate. Nice. We got some of that kick bleed out of this bottom snare mic. Now for EQing this bottom snare, I'm going to use the SSL channel. I've been using the Fab Filter Pro Q2. Now, when I'm typically working on EQ with instruments, I'm usually using one of these parametric EQs. I use the graphical EQs for tutorials just to give you more of a visual, but I highly recommend using a parametric EQ because you get to use your ears and you're not watching the, the waveform and the EQ, things like that. And you'll just become a better mixer when you're using one of these parametric EQs. First thing I'm doing with this EQ is rolling everything off to 120, and then again, rolling everything off after 12K, just like we did on the top. On the top snare mic, I usually roll off to about 100, but the bottom snare mic doesn't need as much low end, and we wanna get as much of that kick sound out of this mic as possible. So usually about 120 is where I go for a high pass filter. So the first thing we wanna do, just like with snare, the top snare, is we wanna get rid of some of the nasty frequencies and right around 600 down here is usually a pretty nasty frequency for bottom snare. So I'll just boost that for you so you can hear it and then I will take it out. Horrible, right? So just took out about 6 dB there. Not sounding awful. Now, obviously, we want to make this bottom snare mic bright as hell, right? We want to hear the rattle of those snares. So just like with the top snare mic, I'm going to do an 8K shelf boost. So about a 9 dB boost there. We really want to bring out the sound of those snares. And last but not least, I always boost the low end of my bottom snare mic. A lot of people just roll this off, but I do believe the bottom snare mic can offer a good amount of low end to your overall snare sound. So right around 220 here, we are going to see if we can get some low end out of this bottom snare mic. See, there's some low end there. And there we go. So now all there's left to do is to mix this bottom snare in with our top snare mic. So I'm just going to solo them both and I will bring this bottom snare up a little bit until we are starting to hear some more of those snares. And there we go. So here is without the bottom snare mic. And with. And that's what we like. That's it. I hope this showed you how we can transform a boring home recorded snare into something a little bit more exciting. There's obviously so much more I could teach you 
on just mixing snare alone. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to download your free Ultimate Home Studio Mix Guide. I made this for you guys so you could start getting your mixes sounding better. There's a lot of great information in there. And be sure to reach out if you have any questions or if you need any help with your mixes. Thanks.